Alrighty, welcome back everybody. I hope you guys are having a fantastic summer. I am officially on my first day of summer vacation today. I took a full summer semester of classes and I have exactly a month off between now and when I start classes in the fall. So I'm going to try to film as many videos as possible so that I can just edit them and not worry about filming anything when my life becomes crazy again. So. To start it off, I am going to be doing a video about my five worst purchases and my five best purchases. And by worst and best, I mean like the best deals I've gotten in terms of how much money I've had to pay and also like the worst, like where I probably maybe should not have bought the horse for the cost that I did. Um, this was the top requested video in the last Instagram poll that I did and from here on out I might just like film a couple and then poll to see which ones you guys want me to post instead of polling before filming and then filming the video just because it would make my life easier. So without further ado I'm just going to jump right in because there will be way more talking in my next couple videos that I have planned. So first I'm going to do my top five worst deals, my top five worst purchases. So I want to premise this by saying that if I was not willing to pay the money to buy these horses, I wouldn't have paid the money to buy these horses. So when I say worst deal or worst purchase, like clearly it wasn't that bad because I bought the horse and I wanted the horse and I felt that the horse was worth the money. And I'm not perfect, and I definitely have paid more for a couple horses than maybe I should have, but I also do my research, and I know how much horses typically go for. There's a lot of different ways to do it on eBay or whatever platform you choose to use. There's ways of tracking and learning how much horses cost and how much they're worth and how much they're going for because the market changes so often. So when I say worst purchases or worst deals, yeah, maybe I paid a little bit more than I should have, but it's never been anything too outrageous, which is a good thing. Um, so I'm not going to do these in any particular order. I'm just going to do them because I don't really, I don't even know how I would rank that, you know, like this was the worst deal that I ever made and this was like the least worst of the worst deals. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and start talking about each one and kind of talk about why each one may be like wasn't the best deal I could have gotten. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is my Emerson. And so he was a 20, either 17 or 18 Premier Club horse, obviously. Um, Emerson is one of my favorite molds. I absolutely love this horse. He is probably one of the most like top LSQ horses in my collection. Like he's stunning, he is perfect, I do not regret anything about him. I don't regret buying him. I don't regret the money I paid for him. That being said, I bought him direct from Briar during their, it was like holiday sale in 2019, like at the very end of 2019. I bought him right after Christmas and um, I paid $200 plus shipping for him from Briar. And that's a lot. Hello. This normally you wait until like halfway through the video. Um, two hundred twenty dollars is a lot for an Emerson. Um, they go for I want to say like around the one hundred and fifty area. Um, if you buy them secondhand, maybe a little bit more than that. And um, I paid more, but I did I did get him direct from Briar, so I was paying not only for the horse, but also the security blanket of well. If he's not absolutely perfect, I can send him back, I can get another one. He's coming from a very reliable source, so I don't have to worry about any of, you know, any weird secondhand mishaps. And I knew when I bought him that I probably could have gotten him for a little bit better of a deal. Um, but at the time, I was also buying a couple other things from Briar, so I was already, already paying for, I was already paying for shipping for a couple other items anyways. 
Um, and the only other one, the only other ones in the market at the time were like 175, I think. And since then I have seen a couple go for 150, but at the time I felt like, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to pay an extra $25 to guarantee that this horse is like perfect and coming from a reliable source. And it didn't really bother me that much. I would have rather gotten him from Briar with all, with his COA, with his box, brand new for maybe 20 to $25 more, plus the shipping, which was, again, split between multiple horses. So I did pay more for him than I probably needed to, um, but I don't regret it because he is awesome and he is perfect and I adore him. But I still would count him in my like top five worst deals because I could have saved money on him. Okay. So my next one, again, do not regret at all, but Acadia. So I was not a member of the Collector Club when Acadia was released, so I had absolutely no chance of getting him straight from Briar. Um, I love, absolutely adore the Belay Girl mold, so obviously when I saw him, I was like, well, I will have to have that horse at some point in my life. And he is very expensive. He Honestly, if you have this horse, you got a good deal. So, <laughs> um, and if you got him direct from Briar, you got the best deal. Cause he is, he just goes for so much money. Um, and some of those web special horses, the runs of like 350 or 250, they do, they go for a lot of money. Um, because once they go into people's homes, they don't often come out. Um, but yeah, I paid about, I think with fees, it ended up being about 325 for this horse. That's a, that's a rough estimate. I know it wasn't over 330. Um, and he had been listed on eBay for 350, and it wasn't an auction. It was like a buy it now type situation for 350. And I made an offer to the seller for 300, and the seller messaged me and was like, "If you make an offer for three, like I think it was like 320 um, before like shipping and fees and everything," he was like, "I'll I'll take it." And I was like, I, I can do that. I don't want to do 350, but I will do 320. So I made that offer and now I have him. And I guess the reason why I would say that he was one of my worst deals is just because from Briar, he was like, what, one less than 150. And I paid, I ended up paying double that, like a little bit more than double that for this horse. And I'm typically not going to do something like that. Like if I don't get drawn and I can't find one at cost or like relatively close to at cost, I just don't get the horse, you know? And and I wait until one pops up later because it will for a decent price, but paying double for what Briar sold the horse for, it's a lot. I typically am not gonna do that. Um, but because he is so desirable and because I love this mold so much, I made the exception. And um, he is incredible. He is one of my, if you watch my top 10 tag, top 10 models, my collection tag, he's up there. So I do not regret it at all, but it did hurt my wallet. Okay, so this girl is a very good example, another very good example of a horse that I would have typically waited around for waited for one to come on the secondary market for a much better cost um, than I did. And to be honest, I made this purchase because I really wanted the horse and I was stressed out. It is the Strawberry Roan Slancha Surprise from Briarfest this year, 2020 Virtual Briarfest. And she's the only variation of the surprise that I really, really liked that I did not get from Briar. So if you watched my Briarfest unboxing, you saw that I got the Appy in matte and I got the Palomino in matte. And I really wanted those two colors. I was so happy. I was so happy with what I got. My Palomino is like just, she was my favorite color and she's probably one of my favorite models now. And the Appy is adorable, like so cute. And I love them both. Um, but I really, really liked the Strawberry Roan. I love Strawberry Roans. I love Roans. Um, but I really love Strawberry Roans. And I really love like the Pinto pattern. I just think she's so 
freaking cute. And she looks like Jello. I called her the Jello princess on Instagram before I got her. And um, that's not going to be her long term name. But I'm so happy that I have her. And I paid after fees, because I bought her on eBay, after all of the service charges and shipping, I paid $142 for her. And that's a lot. That is also almost double what she was going for from Briar. That's something that I don't normally do. Like if I want a horse that comes out and I don't get it direct from Briar, I'll just wait. I'll wait around, I'll be sneaky, I'll keep my eye on ads, I'll make offers. And I've gotten a lot of really, really good deals that way. And I have always been able to find the horses that I want later. Um, so she was really impulsive. I just, I really wanted one. And I'm still kind of riding that Briarfest high. And I was like, you know what? She's the only horse that I kind of wanted that I didn't get. Even the ones that I just like wanted a little bit, I ended up getting. And you know, my Briarfest was awesome, but she was the only one. She was the only one that I liked that I didn't end up getting. So, I bought her during finals, so she was kind of a stress purchase. Um, I'm so glad that I have her, and she looks so cute in my conga now. Um, so I absolutely don't regret spending the money, but I probably could have gotten a better deal on her. I mean, they are going, like the going rate for them right now for all of the Matt's launch surprises is like between 130 and 175. So right now, it's like not a terrible deal compared to other secondary prices. But again, compared to like the Briar price and also compared to what they will probably go for, you know, in like six months to a year, probably could have gotten her for less, but I didn't want to wait. I was impatient and she's lovely, so. Okay, so next is my O'Leary's Irish Diamond. And this guy has a little bit of a story. Um, I have always wanted this guy. He was one of like my childhood grails. And when I got back into the hobby, I was like, he was one of the first ones that I knew that I wanted. Um, I had a friend when I was younger and we were collecting that had him and I was like, just always so jealous of him because he was gorgeous. And I was like, I want one. And I didn't pay an outrageous price for him. Um, I, I see him go from about like 40 to about you know, 60, maybe 70 on the high end um, for really, really nice ones or ones that are new in box. And I got him for I think about 55 or 60 plus shipping. So I was like a little bit from the mid to higher end, which that didn't bother me because I really wanted one. And I really wanted a nice one. Like I wanted one that had the crisp white color and the dapples because I wanted to show him. And from the pictures that I saw, it looked like he was super nice. Um, and that is where I was wrong. And that is why he's part of this list. He is almost body quality. Um, he has terrible hoof rubs that were not disclosed and that you could not see in the pictures. He has shiny marks almost all over his body that because he's gray, it's more difficult to see them, especially in pictures. He has black marks, he has black marks on his face, all like all over his body. He is like, he is very like low PSQ, if not body quality. Um, and to pay almost $70, like between $55 and $60 plus shipping for a horse of that quality that's a regular run. If I would have known his quality, if I would have known his quality, I would have not, I would not have paid that much money for him. There's no way, like I would have offered her like maybe $30 max. So I found out after the fact that the lady that I bought him from wasn't, she said she was a hobbyist, but she was kind of like a bookshelf hobbyist and, and that's totally fine. Um, but she was like just selling a couple horses that had literally been sitting on her bookshelf and um, the other horse that I bought from her came in similar condition and thankfully I had paid a reasonable price for his condition but she had told me you know oh he looks he looks perfect because to her, in her eyes he did she, she didn't know any better it was just not a super great situation so but ironically he photo shows really well for me 
which again was part of the issue because when you take pictures of him you really can't see any of his flaws or very very few of them and so when i photographed him to photo show again you can't really see the issues and he actually blazed in the briar fest open show the open photo show <laughs> And he's placed in many, many other photo shows, so he photographs well. So, it maybe someday I'll get an LSQ one, but he's still cute. Okay, and last is another horse that I wanted for a very long time and was willing to spend the money on, but probably could have like been more patient and got a better deal on, and that is my buttercream. And again, if you watch my top 10 horses in my collection tag, you know that he is also in that. Um, so I adore him. He is lovely. He is my favorite Eidicus that I own ever if we're talking OFs. Um, and I paid $2.25 for him. And that's a lot. That's a lot when he was sold from Briar for I think like believe 70 or $80. Um, that means that I paid almost very close to three times what he cost from Briar originally. And that's like the biggest gradient out of any of the horses in this video. And so at the time that I bought him, it was, I bought him recently, like within the last six months. and. There were buttercreams at that time that were being listed for $300 and $350. And that's insane. <laughs> that is five times what they cost from Briar, approximately. Um, and that's crazy. And I tried to talk to one or two of the sellers at that point that had them that high and tried to negotiate a little bit to see if they would budge. They were like, dead set on selling their buttercreams for $350 and I was like, all right, peace, I am not paying that for this horse. Um, and then one came up, again, that was the market. They weren't selling, but that's what people were asking. Like the only ones for sale, that's what people were asking for them. And then one came up for sale and he was $225. And um, at the time I had heard of a couple other people that had like found some either in like collection dispersals or model horse sales pages, like deep into model horse sales pages for like 75 or $80, like for very minimally above cost. And I was like, do I wait and try to get lucky or do I just buy the $200 one? And at the time I had the money, so I went ahead and I bought the $225 one. I paid a lot of money for this horse and yeah I probably could have waited and snooped and tried to find one for significantly less money. He shows great for me, he's beautiful, like he's everything that I wanted in a buttercream. So I don't regret it, he sits on my shelf and he makes me very happy. Okay, so now that you guys know how much money I've spent on horses that I probably shouldn't have. Let's get to the fun part, which is my top five best deals. So my top five purchases that I got for way less than what they were worth. First, I'm going to do, I ended with an Eidicus and I'm going to start with an Eidicus. So my Wapiti, I paid $40 shipped for him. Um, and he goes for, I have seen him go for anywhere from $75 to $150. And so I paid about half of what his like low end going rate is at this point. Um, and I bought him in 2019. Well, oh, it might have been 2020. It might have been this year. I don't know. Uh, time passage is weird. But I paid a little bit below even what his at cost price from Briar was. Um, and the lady that I bought him from is a well-known hobbyist. She knew what she had and she just didn't want him anymore. She wanted him gone. She wanted a quick sale and I was like, I, yeah, I'll buy him. Okay, so you guys have seen this guy before. This is my Darjeeling. I don't, I, I wish, 
I'm normally very good about knowing my name pronunciations, um, but <laughs> I don't know if, if this is right. I never have. Um, I show him under the name Texas Secret as an Appaloosa Stallion, and I got him for the extraordinary price of $25. And he is another one that is, in my opinion, top LSQ. Um, like, not a mark on this horse out of place. He is gorgeous. And he and another horse that I will show in a second um, came from a collector who again knew what she had, but she was selling her entire collection. She was moving and um, needed everything gone like by a certain date because she was like leaving the state. And she had this whole shelf of horses and it was 25 for each horse and I ended up with quite a few of them and he, he was one of them. Um, his going rate, secondary market rate, he was a Briarfest 2017 special run, and his going rate secondary market is like at least $150. Um, you might be able to find ones for lower than that, maybe, maybe higher, but I paid $25 for him. So that's like maybe 20%, a little bit less than 20% of what his like average going rate is right now. So I got an incredible deal on this horse. We have friends. One, two friends. So this next guy, I, he was an accident. <laughs> when I bought him, I did not realize his going rate was as high as it was. I just thought that it was normal. I was like, he, you know, he was a Briarfest special run. They typically go for like, you know, around a hundred bucks and I paid <sighs> I bought a couple of horses when I bought him. Um, so the shipping was split. So I think I paid like no more than $120 for this horse total. Um, and it is my Dagadia and he was from Briarfest 2016. He was a store special um, and he, he goes for like $200 plus on the secondary market now. Um, you might, again, like these are estimates, you might be able to find ones for a better deal than that, but I have seen them going for $200 to $250 recently. Yeah, I got him for, I want to say about $120, maybe $130. Um, I love the Brishan mold, the draft version. I do not like the light version of the Brishan mold. Um, I love the draft version. I love the plated mane on the draft version. It, a perfect Frisian. Like everything about this horse is just lovely. So I got lucky with him. Okay, so you guys have also already seen this girl um, and that is Matt Sierra Rose. And I got her from the same seller that I got my semi-rearing glossy dude. I'm not gonna try to say his name again. Um, so again, I got her for $25. Um, and her going rate on the secondary market is like between 70, 80, something like that. Um, and like $150. So I've seen them go, the glossy ones typically go for more, um, but I like her better in matte. That's just a personal opinion. Um, I like this color in matte. I think it looks really nice and yeah, so I got her for 25 again, which was insane. Like, and, and both of these horses are like top, top LSQ in my opinion. Um, so I probably should have bought like that lady's entire collection because she kept her horses in immaculate condition and she was selling them for so cheap just because she needed them gone. Um, but at least I got what I got and she is incredible. I love her. She shows spectacularly for me, um, especially being a vintage mold. She's just super cute. I adore Pam and I had wanted a Sierra Rose for a very long time and I had no idea I was going to get one for such a good deal. So there she is. I love her. Okay, and I did save kind of a special one for the end even though I'm not really doing these in any particular order. Um, and he is special to me because he's a horse that when I didn't get like selected for him. Um, I never thought he would be in my collection. And that is 
my glossy verdades. So when I said selected, you know what I actually meant. Um, he was not the horse that I got from the Collector Club Appreciation. For, and I think you guys know that. If you follow my Instagram, you know that. Um, I pulled the glossy Seamus. He was who showed up in my box for the 2019 Collector Club Appreciation. And he's so cute. I love, I love my glossy Seamus. I love the Clydesdale Stallion mold. I love how iconic it is. And I really like the modern colors. I love modern colors on vintage molds. Like, they get me. Um, so, I love glossy Seamus. He actually shows really well for me. Um, and I bought a matte Seamus after I got the glossy because I liked the glossy so much. So now I have two. And so I wasn't disappointed at all. But as you can see, maybe you can see that, I conga the Salonera mold. And when there was a glossy anything on the Salonera mold, I was like, I really want it still. Like, I am happy with what I got, but I would really like one. And people were selling him for $400 or $500. But like right after the Collector Club appreciation, people were asking that much money for him and they were trading him for like connoisseurs and like great, like just craziness. And I was like, I I am not doing that. Like I have, I have the matte one. Like I, I really want him, but I'm not gonna pay $400 or $500 for him. And the asking price for him has gone down since then. I think right now they're going for about 250, maybe 300. And there's a couple people asking 500 for them, but they're not moving. Um, so it has gone down, um, but that's, I mean, that's still so much for a horse that was free and ugh, to pay, yeah, to pay 350 or even 250 for a horse that I had the matte version of, I was just like, I don't know. I, I'm i not that into collectability at this point and that's a lot of money. Like I could buy a connoisseur or I could buy multiple Briarfest special runs, literally anything else to work on any of my other congas. So I had kind of given up looking for one. Um, like I'd kept my I kept my eyes on them because I was obviously still interested, but I wasn't I wasn't going to pay those prices. And it was a couple months after Collector Club Appreciation happened in 2019. I don't remember if it was still 2019 or if it was like January of 2020. I think it was like a, it was again around Christmas time. Um, this guy came up for sale and he was new in box and the lady was asking like, I think she asked 175 for him and I offered her 150, and, which like, that was kind of ballsy of me <laughs> because he was going for so much. I mean, it still is going for so much more than 175. Um, so for me to try to like talk her down of a price that was already like half of what he was going for. Uh, but she she accepted my deal, obviously, because he's here. So yeah, I got him for $150 shipped. And I still don't really know how, and I really love him. Like sometimes I forget that I own him and I look at my shelf and I'm like, <laughs> I have a glossy one. All right, so that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about some of the best deals and the worst deals that I have made. It was fun for me to kind of like remember purchasing each one of these horses and like my thought process when I did that. But yeah, I have this whole month off. I'm back to law school in the fall. We're still online because you know, COVID. So stay tuned. I will keep y'all posted on my Instagram about what to look out for and I will see you next time. Bye. Didn't mean to say it like that Stay